There's still a great deal of excitement, but also plenty of scepticism about the potential of open, disaggregated, multi-vendor radio access network systems to play a role in the mobile networks of the future. So where are we right now with Open RAN? Well, I'm talking today with Francis Haysom, Principal Analyst at Appledore Research, who's been tracking the Open RAN sector for several years already to get some insights. So Francis, thanks so much for joining us. Good to see you again. Uh, now, Open RAN has been in development for years. There's a small number of greenfield deployments and a number of ongoing trials, mainly by large network operators. Is this where we expected the Open RAN sector to be in 2023? Uh, what's your view on the current state of the Open RAN ecosystem and its maturity? Is it set to play a bigger role in network operator plans in 2023? I think it will um, take an increasing um, aspect. It will take on an increasing role in 2023, but I think that will largely be what I would term is RAN augmentation rather than necessary, something that is in incredibly new. And I'll explain the situation. We, it, as you mentioned, our research said that we, we, we think there are three areas of open RAN. We think actually everything will be open RAN in, in the end. Um, but a lot of that will be with the traditional RAN, uh, RAN providers. We see a role for what we term is new um, integrated um, so, uh, solutions, the likes of, uh, say, a Samsung and an NEC, again, using Open RAN as a differentiator, but as a, as a whole. And thirdly, we see this sort of really innovative multi-vendor, multi um multi-network um, open RAN uh, solutions as being something that is growing. I think the situation we've got, we are in it at the moment, is not necessarily to do with open RAN, but it's to do with specifically where the industry is. A lot of what open RAN does is enable things like innovation and an increased ecosystem. But at the same time, whilst those are the opportunities, they're also the challenges of Open RAN in that a lot of that innovation isn't very, very apparent and the immediate needs of operators tend to be around, I just need to get five, I need to get my 4G and my 5G um, to work with existing mobile broadband applications. The sort of killer use cases haven't jumped out either for 5G or for what Open RAN can do in terms of enabling that. So there's a, there's a lack of killer use cases beyond Open RAN as just another RAN. So that's that that's an issue there that needs needs to be addressed. The second one is about ecosystems. Again, in a situation where you've got rollout targets um, and and not a huge amount of innovation necessarily, um, the price point of uh, an integrated solution can look very preferable to your um, risk and maybe a higher price point for you integrating lots of open RAN um, components. So I think there is an increased role in 2023, but it will require um, a lot more emphasis on how we create ecosystems of multi-vendors and on the whole innovation opportunity. What can we do differently with open RAN? Okay, so it, it still seems then that the Apple door research view is that ultimately the open RAN sector is going to be dominated by the major traditional RAN equipment vendors. I mean, do you think we'll see much in the way of vendor diversity uh, over the coming years? We are already seeing that, but we're, it, 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 as I say, we're in that kind of sort of um, inflection point between what I would term is is a, is a future innovative um, role for Open RAN and this Open RAN as what I would term is is an alternative, an alternative that can um, uh, replace um, the, uh, the the traditional um, Chinese vendors. Um, as uh, as as something that can be used in a uh, procurement uh, procurement exercises. To some extent, we've seen that already with um, the the announcements from Vodafone recently. They've, they've been a very strong advocate of new ecosystems, trying out lots of things. But in terms of their most recent major procurement in the open RAN. Um, area that is very much based around um, uh, procuring open RAN solutions from. Nokia, a traditional vendor, and also Samsung, a, a sort of new challenger vendor in, in the area, rather than it's a completely open ecosystem in which we're using lots of lots of different components. That that sort of integrated whole 
um, if, if you like a kind of virtual Chinese oper operator that can be used in the RFP, seems, seems to be winning out at the moment. Okay. Uh, I mean, what do you think could be done to accelerate developments in the open RAN sector, maybe to bring more new players in and to advance the innovation? Uh, I mean, what, what would help to move things along faster? I think I come back to my my term. I think it's the innovation strand. I think there is not there there, but it but it it needs to be associated with either operators or new in the industry segments seeing the advantages of being able to innovate around for their specific needs versus a sort of general need of 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 what a mobile broadband. RAN looks like today. So an, an, an example, an example will be, you know, Open RAN gives you a lot, um, uh, particularly as you, as you move to the vertical disaggregation, the Rick Rick gives you, it gives you a lot of opportunities to play different games with spectral efficiency, handover, etc. And and I think getting those kind of handover and spectral efficiency needs to look different, say in a port or in a rail yard or um, or in a um, high-speed train or something like that, where you start to see significant benefits of having the disaggregation, being able to bring in new uh, new innovative ideas in, in, the, in that area. I think that that is the real thing that will drive dri um, drive the difference here. If, if, if we're honest about it, Open RAN actually adds only one thing to the existing VRAN solution, which is to open up the front hall between the radio devices and um, and the, the, the baseband. Um, in, in in many aspects, that's that's purely can I buy can I, can I buy a, a, a better antenna from somebody? Um, for, uh, and a separated um, VRAN infrastructure. That's quite a li that is actually quite a limited differentiator in terms of the the actual end to end integration of the RAN. I think the the big innovation is when we get to the RIC. Right. Yes. I mean the the RAN intelligent controller or, or RIC is definitely emerging as a key area of development in open RAN circles, but. It still seems quite early days there. I mean, are we ready to see RIC platforms be deployed in networks this year, or is that still too early? Very simply, no. I don't think we are in a position to see RIC um, being deployed de 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 deployed in anger. There will, de de don't get me wrong, there will definitely be proof of concepts, and there, there, there's certainly a number of evidence of those of those proof of concepts. Again, I don't, I don't think the technology is actually hugely. Um, a difficulty with the RIC. Um, we're used to controllers already controlling a lot of the other aspects of, of, of networks and RAN. The, the intelligent controller is just another aspect aspect of that one. Um, again, I think the, cha the challenge here, here is the ecosystem and how the how how telcos can procure that ecosystem. It's great to talk about innovation, but at the same time, if if we take the RIC as an example, this idea of pluggable applications that will go into the RIC that will change characteristics of the RAN, that's both an innovation, exciting thing. It's also something that is deeply scary to the operational processes of a of a telco today. Um, the idea that there is software controlling the way, um, dynamically controlling the way coming from third third party applica applications is is a slightly scary risk seen as a risk uh, risk to the industry and so a lot of the aspect is not to do with technology here it's to do with uh, creating the ecosystems creating the life cycle management which allows telcos to understand this risk can be managed and this risk can be managed in a way that enables the innovation but that's going to take more than a year right and i mean it sounds like innovation is needed on the opera operator side in just the way they they do business with the ecosystem, uh, I mean, do you see any potential for you know uh, engagement models and and procurement processes to to change any time soon that will uh, enable a, a greater interaction with uh, the the kind of uh, app developers that uh, are being talked about to run on RIC platforms? 
I think there are there are early signs that there might be. We we have we have various initiatives, you know, fundamentally looking at the um, at, at the at the way we run procurement um, processes within the industry. But again, they are very. At, at the end of the day, we are an intensely capital um, intensive industry. Um, the, the the way we procure will be a, about optimizing that 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 capital expenditure and. To some extent, if if we're talking about innovative use cases that may or may not appear in the next one to two years, um, against a um, I can buy an integrate I can buy an integrated round solutions potentially with the um, the ability to expose open round interfaces, but I can buy that integrated from um, a, a single supplier or a, a verified um, ecosystem of, of of suppliers. I'm likely to take that in the current situation with Intelco. I think the positive thing we can say in this area is to look at some of the uh, disruptors in open RAN, Rakuten, for example, and Dish in the US. Um, the thing that is driving success with open ran in those organizations is the clear view of wanting to do something different wanting to innovate whether that's in terms of operational efficiency um, or, of of the network um, in the example for uh, for rakatan um, and in dish the, the the willingness to think about wanting to be hyper personalized in terms of the type of network that can be delivered to an enterprise um, and the consumer as well so I think there is opportunity here, but you've got to have a clear business rationale that drives your willingness to adopt open RAN. Otherwise, the 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 integration, the risk, etc., will and uh, will will mean that you will drive towards a traditional RAN implication. And if you don't want to do anything differently, at the end of the day, open RAN is a RAN, and that's uh, that's it simple. So business drivers are the key thing to making the change. Okay, yeah, great point. And I think there's going to be a lot more focus on that aspect of Open RAN and its role in mobile network operations uh, during the course of this year. So, Francis, uh, thanks very much for joining us today. Great, as always, to, to get your, your views and your inputs and look forward to speaking with you again dur during 2023 to get your views, not only on Open RAN, but on other parts of the industry as well. So thanks very much for joining us. Thank you.